Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetrabit Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. Kirby and the Amazing Mirror is one of my favorites in the Kirby series, with its awesome visuals, Metroidvania-style gameplay, and not to mention 4-player co-op multiplayer, which I never really got to experience. So Nintendo is planning on re-releasing this game on the Switch Online service here sometime in 2023, so as such, I finally decided to cover this game here on Lost Bits, and for this video, I'll just be focusing on pre-release stuff, including a pretty sweet prototype version. And with all of that said, go slap and inhale that like button below, it's time to check out some Kirby and the Amazing Mirror Lost Bits. Alright, so for starters, there are actually a few websites for this game where whoever was making them opted to use screenshots from earlier pre-release builds of the game. First up, we got a Japanese website for the game from 2004, the year that the game was initially released on the Game Boy Advance. Changes seen in these screenshots include more minor stuff like the corners of platforms being less polished, the brightness of the background here being increased, the walls surrounding this bomb and these stone blocks were improved in the final version to not awkwardly just cut off, these platforms were seen a bit higher in the earlier version, the cannon here in Mustard Mountain was incorrectly placed, not only uncentered on the wick, but also, well, in the ground. This level was actually misspelled as Mountain on the map screen here, and we can also see that the buttons would have had different effects too. Instead of using L and R to move between areas, originally the A button would have been used to move to the next area, and instead L and R would have been used to zoom in and out of the map. And similarly, on the world map menu, instead of using select to switch maps here, the A button is seen here originally. Then for the screenshot of the Speed Eaters minigame, the shading on the Kirby's was updated, as was the background here. For Crackity Hack, all the number UI graphics got better shading, the meter for the crack originally showed the distance in meters instead of showing two zeros as is seen in the final, and then probably the most obvious change here is that the pedestal on which the minigame's winner stands on was completely revamped from a pink one to a simpler looking blue design. Another interesting change on this site can be seen in a screenshot of the collection room where the graphics for the spray paint cans here look much simpler in the early version, as they lack the shading to give them more depth as is seen in the final. And then similarly, across the board of all the screenshots of the regular gameplay, the cell phone graphic was also altered. Not only was the phone changed from a flip phone to a phone of the non-clamshell variety, but the antenna was also included in the outline in the final graphic too. I guess Kirby had to trade in the old Motorola Razor. Oh, also, sometimes the area's name was missing or the brackets surrounding the number were seen in light blue instead of the final release's pink in the bottom right of the screen here. Now, okay, having early screenshots of the game for a website dating back to 2004 isn't all out there. But what if I told you that a similar thing happened much later in 2017? Yep, as part of celebrating Kirby's 25th anniversary in 2017, a video showcasing a bunch of the Pink Puff's copy abilities was released on the official Japanese Nintendo YouTube account. And wouldn't you know it, for whatever reason, the gameplay from Kirby and the Amazing Mirror that was used, again, appears to be from an earlier build of the game. I guess whoever was recording footage for this video just decided to use a pre-release build. And as you'd expect from another early build, some more changes can be noted here. Across the board, just like we saw in some of the other early screenshots, whatever build they used for the footage here just didn't have the name of the room in the bottom right of the screen, the background tiles for this cave are quite different, the floor here was originally a solid floor that Kirby couldn't jump through unlike the thin platform seen in the final build, and then for this room, there was apparently originally a QP enemy here that was removed, and then the passage up here past this slope wasn't implemented yet at this point either. And if something made in 2017 wasn't close enough for you, I kid you not, the website for HAL Labs, the main developers of Kirby games, actually features screenshots from a pre-release version of the game, like right now, on their current website. We can again see the early flip phone graphics, the health meter appears to be different in this screenshot, 
The background graphic here was moved. Some grass was added both here and here to embellish the ground, I guess. The area names are, big surprise, missing again here. And then in this screenshot of the central circle area, the main mirror is using an earlier graphic, and we can also see that the pillars around the mirror to Olive Ocean have some different coloring as well. Like I said, having screenshots from pre-release versions of the game for a website the year that the game was released is one thing, but seeing pre-release builds being used in promotional material almost 20 years after the game's initial release is, I think, pretty crazy. And now for the latter half of this video, found in the Gekin Nintendo demo discs from 2004 is a pre-release demo build of Kirby and the Amazing Mirror that apparently dates back to a build date of December 2003, or about three and a half months before the initial release of the game in Japan. And despite being so close to the release date, there are still quite a few differences here compared to the final release. For starters, despite still being in the game's files, almost half of the items, enemies, and objects never go used in this demo build. These include the regular and eight-directional Kirby cannons, the Shotso enemy, the energy drink healing item, and more. And in addition to those, several copy abilities are also never normally obtainable in this build, including the UFO, the Master Sword, Missile, Mini, Burn, Throw, Sleep, Cook, Crash, Tornado, as well as Magic. Now I say normally because a few of them can still be forced into the game by editing its memory, though as we'll see, they aren't exactly... complete. For example, for the UFO ability, the proper UFO Kirby sprite isn't used, and additionally, the beam attack stops like halfway through as though it hit a barrier or something. Then for the smash ability, Kirby's arm is actually animated for the Vulcan jab move instead of disappearing as is seen in the final version. The twinkle star spin move appears to have a much smaller area of effect as well as a different motion graphic. And to add to that, the graphic for the icon of this ability is also different here, despite it not normally even being visible. Here, Kirby is seen closing his eyes, and then probably the biggest change is that originally, the Super Smash Bros. logo could be seen in the background. Kirby's Smash copy abilities moveset was modeled after Kirby's from Super Smash Bros. Melee, and HAL Labs developed both games, so although it's kind of weird that this logo was removed, I guess the idea was to maybe make Kirby contrast more with the background in this graphic. And lastly, again, despite not ever normally being accessible in this build, the Master Sword ability also saw a few graphical changes. For one, much like the regular sword ability, in this build, Kirby is seen wearing the iconic green hat when wielding the Master Sword, and not only during regular gameplay either, but also in the map screen graphics as well as the heads-up display icon too. It's unclear why this decision was made to get rid of the green hat, but if I had to guess, maybe it was to further differentiate the ability from the regular sword. Now, those are some changes to the abilities that aren't normally accessible, but there are also a few changes, mostly minor, to the ones that you can obtain by normal means in this demo build. First, Bomb Kirby can throw the bombs a bit faster in the prototype. Stone Kirby appears a bit brighter in the prototype, and among some other differences, if you run into transforming into Stone Kirby, the prototype version actually gives you a small boost of speed that lets you roll slightly further. Sword Kirby's combos take a bit longer to start, Spark Kirby's crown and flaming spark hair appear slightly darker in this demo version. When using the Cutter ability, the Cutter falls entirely off-screen in the prototype after hitting an object, instead of it just disappearing almost right away. And then lastly, the Fighter ability probably saw the most changes. The Side Air B attack used to give Kirby more momentum in the air, the Low Charge Hadouken attack is missing in the demo and Kirby can pretty much fully charge it almost immediately. And most different is that the neutral B attack in the air used to do a downward kick move instead of a side spinning kick. And this downward kick was eventually moved to the down B in air slot for the final version. Next up, there are actually two enemies left over in this build that weren't used in the final release of this game. First we got this little blue guy, who bears some resemblance to the shooty enemies that are seen in this game. And, as we can see from these graphics that are left over, it looks like it would have turned into a ball, likely when jumping. Now, although it's not 100% confirmed, there are only two unused health bar name graphics left over in this game, 
one for another unused enemy we'll get to a bit, and then one for a stoppy. And since this guy is the only other unused enemy here, it's fairly likely that this was meant for this fella. Anyways, the other unused enemy is much more detailed and has many more leftover sprites for everything from walking, to throwing something, taking damage, and more. And like I mentioned, the other health bar name is meant for this fella and refers to it as Tokon, I hope I said that right. Now unfortunately, despite having all of these sprites, in this build of the game, pretty much all other coding for this enemy has been gutted. But just based on its appearance resembling a wind-up clock or timer, it's been theorized that it may have been planned to throw music notes as its attack. In any case, at the end of the day, neither Stoppy or Tokon here ever got to appear in the final cut. Now let's go over some of the more notable audio differences in this earlier build. And to start things off here, even the title screen music is slightly different here, notably featuring a heavier bass track compared to how it's heard in the final. The theme heard when Dark Meta Knight first fights regular Meta Knight in the game's intro cutscene has a slightly different intro. Then in gameplay sections, although not normally playable in this build, the music for the beginning area in this demo version uses the Vegetable Valley track from Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. And I guess this was used as a placeholder until the final remix of the Forest and Nature area was later implemented. Then, just like with the title screen, the music used for the forest and nature area in this build also features a louder bass track. And bass fans stay winning as, big shocker, the bass track in the central circle area is once again louder in this demo version. The music for the space area is missing the epic synth scale leading into the song's bridge section. Then in the prototype, the synth heard in the Dark Meta Knight battle has like some weird modulation effect applied to it that makes it sound super unsettling. Here's a quick comparison of the two. Yeah, pretty creepy. Next up, this prototype also has a fair bit of graphics that were updated or changed for the final release. And things, once again, start at the title screen itself, where here, quite a few changes can be seen with the game's logo. Mostly, the colors were changed and outlines were made darker and more thick, and as you can see, this made the text and everything else stand out that much more. Then other graphical differences include Kirby's animation for him calling on his phone being slower in the prototype and more obviously is that it's lacking the waves coming out of the antenna. And then speaking of the cell phone, although it wasn't the flip phone variety in this demo, the antenna wasn't included in the whole outline again and there was a black button on the phone that was changed to a red in the final version. And then other changes include the world map looking much brighter and vivid in this prototype, the center of the gray dimensional mirror star used to have some lines around it, and then probably one of the most minor graphical differences I've ever covered, the mirror to rainbow root is a whopping one pixel lower in the prototype. Crazy, I know. This prototype also actually has a unique graphic that isn't in the final cut, and that's of this screen that's used when the player completes the demo after defeating the King Golem boss. 
This screen has the four Kirby saying farewell to the player and shows off the upcoming March 2004 release date of the game in Japan. Then, in addition to the used graphics that were altered, the prototype build also has its fair share of graphics left over in the game that aren't normally ever seen. These include the misspelling of Mustard Mountain we saw in the pre-release screenshots earlier, which doesn't get used in this build since the level's names aren't ever shown. There is the less shaded Kirby sprites for the Speed Eaters minigame, and we can also see that Kirby's jump for winning the minigame was also changed from him just being happy to him being nice and full. The first gate in Peppermint Palace is different and more so resembles the second gate that's seen in the final cut. Then much like the grey dimensional mirror, the restored gold version also has the lines around the star in the prototype here. Dark Meta Knight sprite was slightly changed with the unused prototype version having gold trim on the shoulder pads, burning eyes as well as a slightly different color palette overall. And lastly, there are also unused graphics of Kirby with the Missile, Mini, and Cupid abilities exiting the hub doors from Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. Now, all three of these never get used in the prototype, but interestingly, the Cupid one actually also remained left over in the final cut of Amazing Mirror, but once again, it remained unused. Then lastly, for the unused graphics, although not ever normally visible, left over in the prototype are also early versions of the pause screen for a bunch of Kirby's copy abilities, or lack thereof. Now, although for the most part, these early versions look fairly similar to the ones that were used in this demo, as well as in the final release, a few changes can also be noted. The early versions lack the copy ability icon graphic in the bottom right, and instead just have a green square as a placeholder. The text graphics were pretty crude and obviously touched up, sometimes entirely different graphics were used or added, like for the cutter and bomb pause menus here, and originally it looks like some of the pause menus didn't include a tutorial screen on how to use the ability. And then sometimes, like with the sword and sleep abilities here, the pause menus actually underwent at least two revisions, as we can see that the unused prototype screens, the ones that are used in the prototype, and the ones that went on to be used in the final cut are all different. Now what's extra interesting is that pretty much all of these unused early pause screens here bear more resemblance to the ones that were used in Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. But then, the most interesting of all of these unused pause screens is one that wasn't used at all in this prototype, the final release, or any other known build of this game. Now this pause screen has this placeholder drawing of Kirby face down in a puddle of red… uh… jam, and seemingly has his soul leaving his body. And if you have any doubts, the text at the top here translates to escaped, and then in the parentheses the text translates to dead or foa, which is a practice in both Buddhism and Hinduism that relates to the transfer of consciousness at the time of death. The other text here translates to I knew it was impossible, and something came out. Now, of course, although the Kirby series has seen some uneasy stuff like O2 or heck, even the final boss of this game, this graphic would probably send this game into the T14 ESRB rating, so it would have had to have been changed. But it's currently not 100% clear what this pause screen was actually for. It has been speculated, however, that it could have been meant for either if the player would pause the game just after Kirby died, or also what I think is more likely, that this was an early placeholder pause screen for Kirby's Ghost ability. The Ghost ability ended up being introduced in the next 2D side-scrolling Kirby game, Kirby Squeak Squad, so it's entirely possible that there might have been once plans to introduce it here. And since that ability deals with transferring consciousness, I think that only solidifies that theory. Alright, and now finally getting to the gameplay, there are actually a few changes as well. In addition to the game mode, safe select, or any of the other main menu things not being in this demo build, you can't press the L button to warp out of a level here, and instead it will just call the other Kirbys, and overall enemies encountered and their placement is often different in this build compared to the final. Oh, and also the game immediately kicks you into the central circle area with no intro cutscenes of Dark Meta Knight or Kirby or anything. Then there are also a few differences in some of the level layouts as well. The floor in the King Golem fight is lower in the prototype. Originally, this cherry found here used to be contained in this treasure chest. The background of this section in Moonlight Mansion was pretty different in this build and honestly looks much better as I think it really looks like you're still inside of the mansion. 
The switch under this golem here is missing in this demo, and this golem activates when Kirby is on the right of it, rather than on the left, as it was changed to for the final cut. This room in Moonlight Mansion lacks the ability trophies seen in the final, the door you enter from gets blocked off in the demo for some reason, and the Switch graphic remains here instead of disappearing after it's pressed. But then probably the biggest change of them all is that this area of Rainbow Root was actually changed quite a bit from being a horizontal one into the vertical one that's used in the final. Now last up for this video, there are actually a few cool debugging features found in this prototype version as well, three to be exact. First up, we have an error handler menu. There isn't all too much to toy around with here, it being an error handler and all, but the Japanese text in the middle translates to communication error, check all connections and try again. So yeah, this appears to have been meant for perhaps testing the multiplayer functionality for the game, or at least that's the error that it handles by default. Secondly, we have a sound test menu. Now we've seen these plenty of times over the years on Lost Bits, and as per usual, this menu of course lets you scroll through and listen to all of the game's music as well as sound effects. Not too much else to say about this one, but it's obviously nifty for listening to specific tracks and sound effects by themselves. Oh and yeah, how could I forget, we also have these little golems here that do a little move when you swap between scrolling through the music and sound effects. And then last, but certainly not least, is my favorite of the trio here, and this one is a sprite test menu. Much like the sound test, this one, like the name implies, lets the user view all of the game's sprites and associated animations. So you can scroll through all of the sprites of Kirby and his animations for all of the copy abilities, various objects, as well as enemies, even the unused ones. And in addition to being able to move the right sprite around, another interesting function is that by pressing the A and Start buttons at the same time, the sprite on the left side will be given the fire hat from Kirby's fire ability. And yeah, not only can you do this for Kirby, this can also be applied to stuff like enemy sprites, which is honestly equally cool as it is strange. Overall, I really enjoy playing around with the sprite test menus as it's kind of like looking through a compendium of all of the game's characters. Anyways, I think we'll leave it there for the pre-release stuff of Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, and I hope you enjoy. If you did, let me know, and I'll probably make a video covering the full game, likely sometime around whenever Nintendo gets to adding the game to the Switch Online service. Till then though, check out some of my other Kirby Lost Bits videos, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to find your way back here in the future. And as always, thank you all so much for stopping by today, and I will see you in a bit.